All right, so the first one is because you have a poor on-site search engine. So most e-commerce websites have a search box usually on top in the header section. And if you don't have an auto-complete or auto-suggest, then you're definitely losing money every single day, that's for sure. So now let me show you a good and a bad example. So lately I was looking for a new CPU for my computer to upgrade it, and I was looking for an AMD Ryzen 9 series. So I went on a few different websites, and that's when I noticed that a lot of them have that feature, but some of them don't have it at all, and definitely they're losing money because of that. So let's go on this website here, and let's search for AMD, and then I type Ryzen, and you can see we have an autocomplete here and also suggestion with images and everything and the price and all of that, you know. So it was a 9 series. There you go. And there it is. This is exactly the one I purchased, you know. So I purchased this uh, just a few days ago. But this is the one I was looking for. So all I had to do basically here because of all the suggestions, all I have to do is click on it. There you go. I can see the price. I can see there's four of them in stock. Delivery date will be del delivered in just a few days. And that's basically it. All the information is right here. So super easy for me to purchase this, okay? Now here's another website here. They do the same thing, you know, same type of business, selling computer parts. So here's the search feature here. So if I click on this and I'm looking for an AMD, okay, nothing. And then Ryzen, still nothing. And then nine. So as a customer, I might not be familiar with all these different names and terms and models and all of that. So maybe I've just put AMD CPU, AMD Ryzen, perhaps, you know, but I might not remember it's a nine series and definitely not a nine five. Uh, which one is it now again? Uh, a five nine five. Oh, you can see it's difficult to remember even like this, you know. So here there's no to suggest nothing. So what I have to do now is to click search. There, there you go. It's returning a few items, obviously. You know, I'm not saying this is wrong. But an auto suggest like we have here is going to go a long way in helping increase your sales and your conversion rate. Now, in line with our search feature, mistake number two is to have missing or unclear product information. So basically, once I found the item that I was looking for, you need enough details to make an informed decision. So back to our processor here, AMD Ryzen 9. As you can see here on this page, I have some details right there. And if you scroll down, you have a complete overview. So you have performance, technology, uh, this is suitable for gaming, precision, overclocking, etc., etc. Now, if you scroll back up, you have the full spec as well as you can see this is an amd ryzen 9 socket am4 and so on and so on so this is a good bit of information for me to make an informed decision now if you land it on this website here instead if you scroll down the page as you can see all we have as a description is this and then you have cross sell and upsell underneath trying to sell you different products okay so this is probably not enough to make an informed decision whereas this one you have a lot more information on this page obviously and this is why amazon for instance always have very long pages full of information because the more information you give your visitors the more chances you have to convert that visitor into a buyer okay so next mistake number three is to have either fake or missing reviews on your website so just to give you an example here let's say i was looking for a bike a road bike for myself and this bike is three thousand euros so it's a good bit of money you know to spend on a bike now what's the next logical step what do you want to do what do you want to know well number one you would like to know what other people think of that bike is it a good bike is it worth three thousand euros or not so you might be looking for reviews obviously you know so let's go on this website here and let's discover this page so i'm scrolling down the page where is it now there it is i have reviews and as you can see just next to it there's a number zero so what good is this to me? <laughs> There's no reviews whatsoever. So you might as well hide this section altogether, you know, because this is more damaging to that page than anything else. It's better not to have the reviews displaying at all if you have none than to actually display it with nothing in that section, you know. Now, when it comes to fake reviews, I don't have an example here to show you because I don't want anyone to get into trouble because of that, obviously, you know. But how can you spot a fake review? Well, it's very easy. Usually, they always have an over-exaggerated headline, you know, like over the top. Uh, These are the greatest headphones ever, something like this, you know. And usually in the description as well, it's a very short description and you can feel that they are slightly pushy as well. Like you should definitely buy these, you know, something like this. Okay, so next reason number four is by not having a flexible return policy. So nowadays customers are entitled when buying online to a cool off period of usually 14 days. So if we take the example of that bike at 3000 euros, 
So when I land on this website here and before I fork out 3000 euro for this bag, I'm going to first check the return policy. So usually this is located in the photo section. This is where people are used to find it. So we'll scroll down the page and I'm going to look for return policy. So you have delivery and return right there. So this is very handy. Plus one for that. So if I click on this now, there you go. So Gary cycle delivery information. So I have shipping option, etc., etc. So let's look for the return policies. So return and replacement. So this is what we are interested in. So making a return and there it is. So this is the information that I'm interested in, obviously at this stage, you know, in the event that you're not satisfied of change your mind, you know, your item may be returned within 14 days of the dispatch date. So there you go. Now I'm confident enough to purchase from them because I know that within 14 days of purchase, I can return the item if it's not suitable or if I'm not happy with it. Okay, mistake number five is to have a checkout process that's too complex and complicated. Now imagine your visitors spend time on your website, finding the right items, they added those items to the shopping cart and finally they decide to check out and pay for these. All of this to end up going through a convoluted checkout process. So that's not going to work, obviously, you know. Now, mistake number six is to have additional charges at checkout. And this one drives me mad personally. So much so that I recorded a video just about that subject. So you can go and watch it if you want to leave the link in the description below. But anyways, here's the thing. Some e-commerce websites have the tendency to add processing or service fees at the very end of the checkout process. So like Fiverr, for instance, you know, so let's say I'm on Fiverr, I want to buy a gig and let's say I want someone to design a t-shirt for me or something like this, you know, so I would click on this. There's the gig. As you can see, this would cost me $5 only. So I'm happy enough with this. So I say continue. And there you go. As you can see, this is going to cost me $5. And at the end, right here, sneakily, as you can see, they added a service fee of $2.28. So it's going to end up costing me $7.28 for the same gig that should normally cost me only $5. Now, bear in mind that they all already making 20% profit on those $5. So why are they charging a service fee at the end? It's totally unfair. And basically a lot of people will abandon their shopping cart right here just because of that. So for the sake of charging two or three dollars at checkout, you might as well not do it and keep your customers. Okay, so our last reason why your website is not performing as it should is a lack of security and privacy. So when it comes to security online, you always make sure that you have an SSL certificate installed on your website. And for this, we go to the padlock here, click on this. As you can see, the connection is secure. If you click on this again, you can check the validity of the certificate as well. So if you click on this now, here we have all the details and you can see they have SHA1 fingerprint and SHA256, which is one of the highest, the most secure one installed. So for that reason alone, I would trust this website. Next, you want to see whom we partner with when it comes to payment. So if you scroll down the page, as you can see here, PayPal, American Express, MasterCard and Visa. So this would be safe enough. Obviously, if you purchase via PayPal, you can open a dispute if anything happens and you'll get your money back. Now let's have a look at another website here. This one here, so they're selling the same camera. As you can see, they have SSL certificate installed and all of that. If you scroll down the page, you can see it's even confirmed here, SSL certified. So they know well, people are looking for this, obviously, you know, and they put next to it here, Trustpilot. See our 264 reviews on Trustpilot. And again, this is to build trust and reliability. And this alone will prove that your website is safe and secure. So these are seven of the main reasons why your online website is not performing as it should. Now, if you like this type of content, let us know in the comment section and we'll publish more of these. Now, if you want to watch the rant I had about Fiverr, I'll leave this here now.